I had been making wine, beer, and sake for years and really loved it. And uh, my business partner, Andrew, had been making wine. His family had, had they'd always grown up making wine. And we had actually um, had been making biodiesel. We were both uh, fooling around with alternative energy. And you know, one day I kind of just got sick of it and I said, Derek, if, if that barrel over there was full of whiskey instead of diesel fuel, I'd be a happier man. And he said, okay, let's open up a distillery. And distillery just did not take much convincing. It was a very cool idea. We're a craft distillery, we're, so it's a, it's a small distillery. Um, typically that's under 50,000 gallons a year. Micro distilleries are just beginning to take off like microbreweries did in the 70s and the 90s. So the timing is right. There's a lot of interest these days in craft spirits and in artisan foods generally. So it, everything just kind of lined up right. Kentucky in general, people seem better educated about spirits. They're really passionate. And Bowling Green's been wonderful to us. Everyone's been, loves what we're doing. They're thrilled that we're here. Uh, Bowling Green has a great downtown and there seem to be some uh, sort of renovation and, and reclamation of the downtown and it was, there were some you know cool new companies moving to the downtown area and they wanted to um, revitalize this. We make gin, absinthe, vanilla vodka, we have some experimental whiskeys and a spice rum. We use a little bit different process with our gin, and, that's, and, and what we use is something called a carter head. And a carter head, is, or a gin head as it's sometimes called, there's, there are only a handful of carter head type stills in the world. And what it does is, rather than putting your botanicals in the alcohol and then distilling, you're actually distilling just the alcohol, and the alcohol goes as a vapor through a botanical basket. And what that does is it, it captures the flavor of the gin, but it leaves behind a lot of the heavier oils. And so it gives you a much smoother gin that is less harsh on the back of your mouth. So we, we have a lot of people say that they hate gin, they don't like gin, and they try our gin, and they say, we really like, we really like that. So we're very proud of that. And um, we were fortunate to win a gold medal after only being open three months, so we were thrilled. Absinthe is a spirit that was illegal until 2007 in America. The reason why it was made illegal is because it was believed to be psychotropic. The FDA did some tests and found that this chemical was in a lot of spices. It was in rosemary, thyme, and so they, they had to allow it to be legalized. We went with a red absinthe because most of the absinths are green, and, um, but there, we did see that there had been a lot of red absinths made in Spain. And to our knowledge, there were no red absence being made in the United States. So we wanted something just a little bit different. And um, we started playing with hibiscus, which is what we used to color our absinthe. And we liked the taste that it was giving us, so we, we went with it. Vanilla bean vodka is our simplest spirit. Fortunately, it's the, uh, one of the most popular because it is so simple to make, but it is an infusion of whole vanilla beans in high proof grain spirit, which we then filter several times through um, activated carbon made from uh, coconut, and then we filter it further, and then we have a vanilla bean vodka. Usually vanilla vodkas are made by taking a clear vodka and adding an extract, so they remain clear or have just a little bit of a tint, and then there's usually sugar added as well. So it's a very sweet vanilla taste. Um, this being an infusion of vanilla bean, it's a very woody, natural vanilla flavor, so again, it's a little bit different. Our rye moonshine and our rye whiskey are pretty unique because it's 100% rye. Most rye whiskeys on the market are usually 70%, 80% rye. You rarely go to 100% rye, and it's because it is so difficult to work with. But it gives a really fascinating character. Rye has a spiciness to it. It's just, it's just a unique grain. It's a frustrating grain, but we wanted a true 100% rye product. And there are people that try the, uh, the moonshine version of it that's unaged, and they, they, that's amazing. You know, it has the mixability of a vodka, but it has a really strong cereal character. So you know it's a whiskey, but you're not sure what's going on. Spiced rum is, is a lot of fun to do. Um, you take a silver rum, you know, clear rum, and you stick it in a, a barrel. Traditionally, those go in used barrels, used whiskey barrels or used uh, wine barrels. And then we spice it with a bunch of different spices. Um, orange peel and vanilla bean, whole vanilla bean, are the two main flavorants. 
but um, we get a lot of the nutmeg, the cinnamon, the clove, the anise coming through. When you mix it with a, a, a Coke or another mixer, um, though you still taste each spice and a lot of people really like that. So when they try our stuff, they're, they're like, this is really different. So although it is a spiced rum, it's not really like a spiced rum that's on the market at the moment. So that, that's what we were going for. Well, we're going towards brown spirits. You, most most microdistilleries start with white spirits while they're aging their brown spirits. Whiskies and bourbons have to be aged. So I think that what where where we will be in five or ten years is we'll be distributed internationally, and I think we'll have a nice balanced portfolio of white and brown spirits.